Hello guys, so in the last three episodes we have first taken apart an older Siemens brand washing machine and we salvaged both a large universal motor and a transmission from that and in the episode after that we then took a look inside one of these motors, talked about the different modes of operation and saw that you can power them both with AC and DC. And in the third episode I then tried to make mechanical connections between these motors and some kind of mechanical device, in this case a drivetrain that I want to use for a robot. And in this episode I'm now showing you some of the results of my search for other sources of cheap but powerful and useful electric motors. And well on that search I stumbled upon a very old but very high quality washing machine and I was able to salvage some really heavy but also kind of unusual parts and that is what we're going to take a look at today. It's the year 1982. Ronald Reagan is president of the United States and Germany is ruled by Chancellor Helmut Schmidt. Metallica haven't even recorded their first studio album yet and well somewhere in Germany a washing machine is built. And that washing machine served its owners for 35 years until I bought it last week for just 10 euros. And well, these people lived in a true renaissance castle and that should tell you that this baby here would have been quite expensive back in the day. So let's take a look inside this marvel of washing machine engineering. And normally you can read off the name and or type number right here, but not anymore. But I happen to have the manual and it's called Deluxe Electronic W760. And the name of the manufacturer is pronounced Miele and at least many Germans regard the washing machines of this brand as the best there are. So let's just take a look inside then. Standing behind the machine you can see that the top cover is held in place by two hooks or hinges. To unhinge this top cover you simply have to remove two screws on the left and right side of the top cover itself and you can just take it out. But there is not much to see here other than the washing powder dispenser and the inlet valves. In order to get further access with Miele washing machines you can also unhinge the front of the machine. And after you have taken out the dispenser you can first unscrew these two screws here and then you open this little door at the bottom of the machine. You pull this little ring opening the door and then there are three bolts that you have to unscrew. And then there is one more screw down here where the little plastic door is and now the front just swings open. And the door holds around 90% of all the quote unquote electronics inside this washing machine. A primitive electromechanical timer, a temperature switch, rotary switches, other switches, the door lock and a relay and of course some wires. And even though I came here for the motor and transmission parts I also salvage other parts as I go along like this pressure or level switch needed to determine when there is enough water inside the machine and the inlet valves can be shut off. And speaking of those valves I detach those as well and also this little printed circuit board inside this little plastic enclosure here that we will take a closer look at later in the video. And these are the springs from which the heavy drum assembly of this machine is suspended. We'll not take him out as long as the machine is still in an upright position though. And with this machine I can simply push the entire door seal inside without any other steps required. And now I put the entire enclosure on its side. Here we can see for the first time the main motor of the washing machine. A large enclosure made from cast iron and not aluminium. We see also the lie pump, a large motor capacitor that I think belongs to the main motor of the washing machine and that would mean that this is indeed an induction motor but more about that later in the video. Here we have two input filters connected to the power cord of the machine and the belt connecting the motor to the pulley on the back of the drum. In the next step I remove the power cord and the filters. I take out the lie pump and here you can see a lot of lime scale in the hose connecting to that pump. And I unscrew the motor capacitor itself and we can read off a capacitance of 16 microfarads. And the idea is now to take out this entire wire harness from inside the enclosure so that I can separate the front with all the electronics from the rest of the enclosure. The actual temperature sensor being a part of the adjustable temperature switch on the front panel of the machine can just be pulled out of the drum. 
And now I unscrew this hinge here that holds this entire front or front door in place. And now I can just remove this metal sheet holding all the electronics and separate it from the enclosure entirely. And now I will finally try to salvage the motor. For that I first unscrew the bolts that I can reach from this position and take off the belt. But now I again put the machine on its other side because from here I can actually access the two other bolts that are still holding the motor on the other side. And I remove those as well. And now I can finally hold the motor in my hands for the first time. And it's really massive, it's weighing around 18 kilograms. And we'll take a look inside this motor and get it running in just a minute. But before that, let's finish this machine off and take out some of the mechanical parts as well. So what I want to do here again is to pull the entire heavy drum assembly out of the enclosure as it's lying on its side. But for that first the shock absorbers have to be separated and these springs here have to be pulled out. But that is now quite easy because there is no more weight pulling on these springs of course. And now I'm able to pull it all out and leave the enclosure behind. So with this drum section separated, the first thing that I'm doing is to remove the large pulley from it because unlike the rest of this assembly, it's made from a rather soft material, some kind of aluminium based alloy and I don't want it to be damaged. So I unscrew this bolt here and now I try to pull off the pulley. But it wasn't as easy as I expected, so I did it with a gear puller and then it was really easy. Now inside you can see that the pulley has a keyway and that there is a key sitting on this shaft here. And well that's a little more old fashioned than what we saw in the Siemens washing machine for example. But I actually like this because it's easier to adapt this to other parts. And in order to go on disassembling this I flipped this entire assembly around. And again I'm using the salvaged top cover to protect the shaft from being scraped off by the floor while I'm working on this. And here we can see that not only is there a massive cast iron frame on the backside of this drum, but also in front of the drum we also have massive cast iron weights. And back when we salvaged the parts from the Siemens machine, we saw that in that case that was made from a kind of concrete. And that is what you see in most modern washing machines. However, here no expenses were spared to make this machine really heavy and rugged. And I remove this rubber seal here, also the hoses all around this outer part of the drum. And there are bolts located in various spots all around the outer drum holding these cast iron weight plates in place. And removing these by hand is really kind of tough because these bolts are sitting really tight. And while doing that you're also loosening these heavy steel sheets here which once held the electric motor in place. And you can take off this galvanized steel bar here and then you can finally take off these weight plates themselves. Next I remove another seal and now I remove the heaters or heating elements that are sitting inside. And now I can finally pull out the actual drum of the washing machine. But this three legged steel part here which connects to the rod on which the pulley is sitting still has to be removed or separated from the drum. And to do that you have to unscrew these really long bolts here that also sit very tight in this case also because of rust. It also has a fair amount of lime scale and maybe washing powder residue on its surface but that can be easily removed with a hammer and or a wire wheel. And the last thing that has to be done is to pry off the actual cast iron frame that holds the pulley and so on. So let's compare the parts that we salvaged today with the parts that we salvaged in the other teardown video. Here we can again see parts from the Siemens washing machine and the good thing about that model was that it had one central cast iron frame that held both the motor and the pulley. And those two were connected by a rib belt of this type here. And the Miele washing machine had a much heavier cast iron frame but one that does not really connect the motor and the pulley.
But on the upside, this pulley and this motor were connected by an old fashioned, very simple type of belt. And that is why it's very easy in this case to replace this belt by a much shorter one, for example, and then connect a standard pulley like this one to the motor. And that would make it more versatile than what we found in the Siemens machine. And of course we saw that the Miele motor is much larger than the one from the Siemens machine. But why that is actually the case, well, we'll learn more about that in just a minute. Here in the background, by the way, we can see the frame and motor of another Miele washing machine, but one that was built around 1990. So machines that are only around 25 years old at this point come with a very similar structure, but they use already the more modern type of motor that we took a look at in my video inside a washing machine motor. And if you want to know more about that, you can find a link to that video in the video description. So I have now fastened the frame in this large vise here and we could now try to connect the motor to this pulley and get it all spinning. But before that, let's take a look inside the motor, find out how it works and find out its pin out so that we can even power it up in the first place. So first of all, we can put away these cast iron parts here that were bolted to the motor, but only used to fasten it inside the enclosure, not necessary to understand how the motor works. Then I have already replaced the original connector of the motor with these ordinary clamps here, connecting to the six wires coming out of the motor's housing. And on one end of the motor, sitting on the motor shaft, we can see the enclosure of a taco coil or taco generator, by which the speed of the motor can be determined. And that is very similar to what we found in the more modern washing machine motor. If we look through these slots here on this side of the motor, we can clearly see the stator winding of an induction motor. And that would only back up an assumption that I made before when we saw the large motor capacitor. But let's now remove this plastic cover here in the front of the motor and see what we have here. These are clearly commutator brushes and a commutator sitting inside. And those would be typically the signs of a universal motor or a DC motor. And here are the field coils and the armature of a universal motor or series round DC motor. And both of these parts are somewhat smaller than what we found in my earlier video about a Miele washing machine motor, but they work on the same principles. So if you wanna know more about that, check my video inside a washing machine motor. At the end of the armature's shaft, we find this plastic connector ring here. And if we now lift off this other cast iron part, we can clearly see a squirrel cage rudder belonging to an induction motor. And here we have the stator pack and stator windings of an induction motor. So what we have here is what is sometimes referred to in German as Doppelmotor or double motor. And it's simply, well, an induction motor plus a universal motor mechanically coupled together. And this is something weird and I don't know if this even exists outside of old washing machines. But why would they even do that? Well, to find an answer for that, let's take a brief look at the wiring diagram that I found inside this machine. You can often find wiring diagrams in Miele machines of all ages. So first of all, we can actually see not two, but five different motors in this wiring diagram. But two of these motors are simply the small timer motors that power the electromechanical timers on the front panel of the machine. And then there is a small motor inside the lie pump. So you can just forget about these three for now. And here we can see that there are two motors here. One is a universal motor with a taco generator and the other one is an induction motor with a motor capacitor. And here we find the words schleudern and waschen. And that basically means that the Schleuder motor, the universal motor, is for running the drum at very high speeds while the other one is for general washing. So the universal motor will run much faster in this example than the induction motor. So I've put the motors back together. Now let's test them. First, the universal motor. We have three wires belonging to the universal motor coming out of the housing, but internally it's a little more complicated. One of the wires leads through one of the field coils and connects to one of the commutator brushes. 
And then there is another wire doing the same thing on the other side of the motor. And there is a third connection, which is a tap to one of the field coils. The tap can be used to change the speed of the motor at a certain mechanical load. But we're ignoring it for now and connect a 12 volt DC power supply to the motor to keep it running at a slow speed, but that should be enough to see if it's working. We'll also connect it to higher voltages and AC, but we're going to do that in the workshop in just a minute when we have reattached the pulley and the bell to this motor so that we have some minimum load. So we have three remaining wires or connections to the inside of the motor and those go to the stator of the induction motor. Now here we can see that it is possible to connect line and neutral to two of the points on the motor and then connect the capacitor between, for example, line and the remaining open connection. And we can also change that around to change the direction of the motor. So let's try that. So we're now back in the workshop and I'm now mechanically connecting the motor to the pulley. And let's try the same thing with the induction motor and the reversal of the directions again. And now I have connected my adjustable isolation transformer to the universal motor and let's step up the voltage a little bit. And there you can see that it spins way faster. And now I'm trying the same thing with one of my self-made face fired controllers from my video about reusing washing machine motors also in the video description. And again, it's way faster. So I think that in many respects, this machine must be a little odd for many of the viewers, but there is one more oddity that I want to address quickly. And that is the little circuit board that we found in that plastic enclosure in the beginning of the video. It has a thyristor on it and it is connected to the taco generator. I thought that it is some kind of motor controller first, but I was wrong. It simply controls the door lock of the machine and it only receives a voltage from the taco coil to determine if the motor and thus the drum is still spinning. As long as the drum spins, the door stays locked. That's all this little circuit apparently does. So that's it for today. As I said in the beginning of the video, I've been looking for other sources of motors and I've been experimenting with other motors. And that is what I'm going to talk about in the next video then. And that is something that I want to directly use in my robotics project. So that of course is still going on. It only takes its time. So I hope that you like this little weird trip into the workings of this old washing machine. And well, if you want to support this channel, please think about checking out patreon.com slash tpai and maybe kick in a buck. See you soon.